What's up, guys and girls? Welcome to another edition of Live Q&A with John Talley. Although you can tell that I am nowhere close to the studio again. I'm just sitting at a, not a truck stop, but a little country store on my way to Roebling Road. So you can guess I'm going to play with my car again. Except I've got that, uh, I do have my little pit bike with me, finally. A little 73 CT90. So we're going to have a little fun this weekend. My son's uh, and his soon-to-be wife are driving up. Well, they haven't left yet. I got a five-hour drive. They've got a seven-hour drive. So I feel sorry for them just a little bit, but not much. But we'll answer a few questions here if anybody wants to drop in. And uh, if not, then shoot. I'll pack up my laptop and be on my way. But let's start off with any questions I may have missed last week and see if any of y'all join up and then uh, we'll go from there. Ice Cream Man. What a handle. I love these things. Anything for a 2006 Suzuki LTR 450 that's bogging out? Well... It's one of two things happening here. Either A, it's not getting enough fuel, or B, it's getting too much fuel, and that's choking it. I would lean toward probably the first one. It's not getting enough fuel. So let's take, a, especially a 2006, getting a little long in the tooth. Maybe you let it sit up a little too long, and your jets are getting stopped up. So I would say let's start by um, making sure our float bowl is clean and all the jets are cleaned out. So... Have we done that particular carburetor? No, but uh, I guarantee you can go to any of our basic carburetor carburetor cleaning vids and at least get an idea of what you may need to look at. Okay, Brett's random. What would be the issue if my fuel pump on my GSXR primes sometimes and then other times fails to prime? My, my bike, I do. Okay. Um, but my bike primes and runs fine, but sometimes I go to start it and it doesn't prime and throws an F1 code. Let me uh, silence my computer. All right. Uh, where do we leave off? I turn the key off and on and it works like normal. The on and off can sometimes, can, can something I have to do between the two or three times, but sometimes usually when it's warm, it starts fine with no issue. I tried the dealer mode bridge to check the code, but it blows the fuse when I plug the bridge. Oops. All right. Um, it's probably going to be one of two things. The, my, my first gut feeling would tell me that it is actually your relay that is the, the fuel relay that's not wanting to act right. Um, hopefully it's just that and it's not your pump going out. I kind of doubt that though because... Uh, the pumps, once they once that motor goes, it's usually done. And with a relay, you're basically just making a, it's a switch. You're just making a contact. Maybe those contacts are getting a little scorched on the inside, maybe have some uh, residue built up, and um, they just don't want to make that connection every single time. Well, how do you determine that? Well, it should be pretty easy. Go to the, uh, the relay itself, it's for one, see if it's getting its trigger voltage every single time consistently, and then look at the output voltage, which is typically going to be your larger wire because it's a, a smaller circuit trying to deliver current and the necessary power for a larger circuit and see if that's getting triggered every time. Now, if it's getting triggered every single time and your pump is not activating every single time, well, there's your answer. It's going to be, hello, it's, it's going to be your... Um, your your relay i mean the uh, fuel relay and if, but if it's sending it every single time now it's going to be a fuel pump so let's hope or hope that it's the uh the former and not the latter merrill dean had asked me i have all come out of the clutch drain plug on my 2005 kodiak 450 there's a there's a seal i need to replace along with cleaning out everything and re-greasing re the clutch, etc., and replacing a belt. Any suggestions would help. Um, well, it sounds like you've answered your own question. You know, if you've got oil that's um, that's seeping out of the uh, the clutch panel uh, on that side, then yeah, there, there should be a seal right there that you need to replace. If I'm following you correctly, 
Um, Sean Robin asked me, I've used your videos to resolve some issues I've, that I've had on a 400EX. I know that one well. Now I'm having my, my one last problem, so you think. When I go full throttle, I have a power surge and the bike will accelerate terribly and then it takes off and then it bogs, then it takes off. Any ideas? All right. Sounds like you're dumping a little bit too much fuel and you need to lean up your circuit a little bit because it's taking a big gulp of fuel and not quite enough air and it's making it kind of crap down before it takes off. So... I would say let's let's lean up on your jet and see where that gets you. Uh, Raymond Eli, and that'll be the last one for from last week. Raymond Eli had asked me, I have a 2017 Honda Foreman 420 4x4, runs for five minutes, then dies, starts up, and does the same thing. No codes. That, I think I may have answered this one last week, and uh, it just got called up. But if not, we'll do it one more time. More than likely, that is your um, ignition coil going out. Is uh, When they're cold, it will usually have enough. What's the right word I'm thinking of? Voltage to, uh, to uh, go ahead and uh, send that spark out. But as, as it breaks down, it gets hot. Those windings start to break down. And then it stops working. So in other words, it shorts out because of the heat. So I would say let's uh, try replacing your, um, your, your coil and see what that gets you. All right, let's swing around and see if we've got a few people. Yes, we do. So we will answer some questions here. Philip Marsh is asking me, I have an 04 KFX 400, the, I don't think he finished his question yet. So, uh, Philip, continue your question and I'll see if I can answer it but I'll try to remember with my limited short-term memory, an 04 KFX 400. All right. That coal miner. Hello, John. Hope you are well. Yes, I am. I have a 2008 TRX 700. I always thought that was an interesting unit, a sport model with an independent rear suspension. Uh, changed D plug air filter, ran injector cleaner through the fuel, but it still bogs when giving gas. Hmm. Check the valves in there are, inspect barely all right you're telling me it's they're barely inspected or they're barely inspected on the tight side might want to go ahead and loosen them up a little bit it sounds like you've done everything correct and that is a fuel injected model is it not if i thought i remember it being fuel injected oh of course you said it is you ran fuel injector cleaner um it still bogs are we sure the fuel pump's delivering enough pressure if I remember correctly, that, sh that one should be around 42 PSI. But I caution you not just to check it with it idling. If at all possible, especially if you have access to a dyno, put a load on it. Because I've seen them, you know, they sit there and just idle and it'll hold fine at whatever PSI. But when you put that load on there, it couldn't deliver it. And that may be what's happening to you. And it may not be so much the fuel pump itself. It may be the filter going into it. It's... It's pulling in enough to make it run normally at idle, but when the demand comes and it really has to pull through the necessary fuel for it to run right, it's choking. So I'd say let's put a, uh, a gauge on it, see what it reads, see if it actually pulls under a load. And if you don't have access to it, well, go ahead and pull it out of the fuel tank and take a look at that filter. It's basically shaped like a bag on the bottom of the pump that may be gummed up. Um, oh, he also added, also had as a Lex fuel programmer and tried different setting, but still bogs. Last thing checked was compression. The compression was good. Well, even with the fuel programmer, that may be an issue. Um, I'd take a look at your fuel pressure first, and then I would probably swing around to the fuel programmer. Um, I've had even the dyno jet ones. Um, we thought we had it tuned perfectly. Uh, it was actually on our, uh, Razor 900 we did several years ago, and it would lose its tune. We'd reprogram it, and it would lose its tune again. Eventually, we just took the damn thing off, and uh, I can't remember what programmer we used after it, but uh, it was uh, it was a programmer that was calling causing all of our problems. Uh, hey, my co-pilot is here. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Gail. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 
reset this up. There we go. <laughs> I'm so easily distracted. But she's a, a great distraction in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, the, let's take a look at the fuel pressure from the uh, the fuel pump and then come back around and maybe consider maybe that fuel programmer is having an issue. Hopefully not. ATV Doctor, how's it going, JT? Thanks for helping all the guys and gals out there. Well, you're very welcome, and hello to you. Oh, uh, who's next? Grammy Sweets. Uh, John Talley's a sexy man. Yes, I am, but I'm taken. <laughs> you're bored today, aren't you? <laughs> oh, come on down. I don't have my mouse, so I'm having to do this with the pad. There we go. Sage Asante is asking, um, my, my Honda Grom is sticking. What's the problem? All right, you're going to have to give me a little bit more than that. Are you talking about the throttle sticking? or Come on, give me some more information. I can try to answer you. Cycle Crazy 2, is there a fuel filter on a 2007 Honda VTX 1800? I'm trying to remember the the year where they went from the the fuel pump being inside of the tank to going down low um in the uh hell it's basically under the, under the frame i mean it's really low on the machine i know they had a fuel pump or a fuel filter when they had the uh the the fuel pump in the tank when they went to that one at the bottom i don't remember it having one Tell you what the best way to find out is uh, just go to go to our website, partzilla.com, put in 2007 VTX 1800, and then go to the fuel system. That'll give you your answer. Oh, uh, in the uh, exploded diagrams, of course, that's going to give you a, a picture of whatever, where everything is and what it is. Steve Vascock said, uh, what is the best way to get the clutch basket off on a 2005 TRX 400EX. Well, it's, it's not that tough. Um, I'm trying to remember if we did a clutch on our on our 400EX, but you know, you pull the outer cover, pull those uh, retention springs off. I think there's five of them. Your plates come out, and then down in there is going to be the uh, the bolt that's or the nut that's holding on the basket itself, and that's going to be staked. And you want to release that stake. After that, um, it's best if you use some type of holder. And uh, I've used that that one several times on a bunch of different clutches that I, I've done uh, to hold the basket still as you remove that intersection, and then the basket will come out. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, Sage Assault came back. Hey, John, I have a 2018 Hologram. The bike is sticking when taking off while letting off the clutch. Well, it's sounds like uh, you may need a new... Uh, clutch cable itself will be my guess. So I, I definitely start with that. Now, if you're still having problems after that, that all, that would kind of tell me that your machine's getting on up there as far as mileage and that may be wearing out the clutch basket itself. And you'll actually see little steps cut in the basket and that's where the plates start hanging up. And that can make it a little bit grabby when you're trying to engage it. Paul, hey, how's it going, Paul? Hey, John. So I had to try out my first freeze job on some lower ball joints on the 700 Polaris. Um, you had one on a newer Polaris model. I wasn't able to watch the whole video. What do you mean you didn't watch my entire video? Come on. <laughs> How did it go using that freeze process to get them in? I'm just curious. All right, Mark Brill, I have an 07 FZ6 that I replaced the clutch friction clutch friction plates. I did not replace the metal plates. They look good. The problem I'm having now is um, when the bike sits overnight, the clutches stick. Huh. Maybe those metal ones weren't in that good a shape after all because they're, they're not supposed to be completely slick. They have little, small little divots all around them. Uh, on both surfaces, on both sides. And I, be, I bet yours are probably worn off. Um, beyond that, did did you give uh, your plates enough of a soak time before you, you put them together? Uh, last question would be, 
what oil are you running? You may want to thin it up a little bit. Just a thought. Paul came back. Oh, come on, machine. Don't hang up on me now. Paul came back. 1988 Kawasaki um, 300A Bayou. It came to me uh, thinking the carb was bad. I rebuilt it and tossed it back on. Still very hard to start. Upon checking for spark, I noticed it doesn't spark. A good spark. I have run into that before, Paul. There is a, um, I think the CDL on that unit's all the way on the back of the unit, right near the grab handle. And I've actually seen them where you could tap the damn thing and it would start working correctly. And sometimes the spark would die off. But um, that would probably be it. Uh, Gail, Paul says hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lincoln Marsh. Hello, John. Link Hello, John Lincoln. Lincoln Marsh here with the Kodiak 450. I'm thinking about doing some upgrades on one of your advice. All right. Which upgrades are you talking about? I will certainly give you my opinion. Imco Garmin, a 2021 Polaris high lifter keeps damaging the rear oil. All right. How is it damaging? it? Is it um, letting water in somehow or another? Or is it leaking? Give me some more information, Amico. Steve, New Zealand. Hi, John. Yamaha Viking occasionally, maybe once in 20 starts. Clicks prior to start, uh, starting the battery test finds. Any suggestion? Starter solenoid? Well, I think you nailed it. Uh, that, that is exactly what I would go for. If you're saying you the battery's good and you hear it click and it just doesn't do anything, chances are it's probably your starter solenoid. If you want to make sure, use uh, just a regular test, test light on the output terminal and make sure she's lighting up as it should. If not, potentially could be your starter. But let's hope for the, uh, the solenoid instead. Lincoln. Oh, Paul says, uh, so what bike you got strapped down in your truck? That is... My 1973 Honda CT90 that uh, my dad bought new when I was eight years old. And we've had it the entire time. That's our uh, pit bike that we use uh, running around uh, to and fro on the racetrack. <laughs> Lincoln, uh, oh, quit doing that. Lincoln Marsh came back first, exhaust tip. That is, that's the idea, right? Will this cause anything, problems or damage? Will the tip add power or with more flow or do you need a few controller when or as is? Just putting on a, um, a, a different exalt, a different muffler, you shouldn't have to do anything. Your, uh, that one should be an FI bike and, or FI four wheeler and it will adjust accordingly um, as far as that. That's within its range of plus or minus I think 5% that it can, uh, that it can send or, or retard fuel going into it. So I think you'll be fine on that. Is it going to give you that much more power? No, but it's going to sound a lot better. Maybe a horsepower or two at most, but hey, why not? Paul came back. Well, it worked, but I asked the owner to come over and put them in, put them in while I do the rest of the work. <laughs> Plus in case he broke it, I won't feel bad. <laughs> Good move. Sometimes I want to do that myself. Phil Bordeaux. Hi, John. Hello, Phil. How are you doing today? Lincoln Mars, simple as bolting on the tip and running the machine. Yep, that should do it. Second, a second upgrade? Well, well, what are you considering? Phil came back. Thanks for helping us in the field. I'm looking forward to that valve clearance video for the GL1800 Gold Wing. Hi, Gail. <laughs> she just stepped out again. Um, yeah, we, we still have to do that that gold wing, the, uh, the, the, uh, the valve adjustment. We did just finish up the, the clutch installation for it. And I, I think that's getting, uh, getting put live here in the next couple of days. All right. Scroll back up. There we go. Uh, Phil came back. By the way, I have a 1973 Yamaha TX750 that I'm rebuilding. I will let you know how that goes. We'll do. I love it when people revive older machines. Cycle crazy too. Thank you for answering my question on the, the fuel filter. Fuel filter. Been to your site. Can't find the, the filter. Hence the question. Ah, fuel pump is at the bottom of the frame. So it was that one. 
So that would tell me that it does not have a fuel filter because um, that unless that fuel pump has one that's integrated to it, which I don't think it does, it doesn't have a filter. Oh, then he came back. The, this is the issue. My, my 07 VTX 1800 big can began lurching after accelerating. The old light would go on briefly. Hmm. I changed the spark plugs. The old ones were fine, but changed anyway. I think you may be heading in the right direction. And uh, as I advised the other guy with the fuel pressure, I think you need to check yours and see where it's at. Let us know. Amico Garmin, 2021 Polaris Highlifter real oil seal blows out on the bottom of the seal. I replaced it twice. Huh. I had not heard that, that was a problem, but uh, I, and since you've done it twice, it almost makes me uh, wonder about the uh, the case itself, or is it actually blowing out around the uh, the uh, the input shaft on it? So I would I would hazard to guess if there's something wrong with that shaft that it's allowing it to uh, wear out prematurely. Maybe uh, maybe it needs to be replaced as well. Not exactly the cheapest thing to do, but maybe you, maybe that one piece you could uh, replace instead of having to do the entire shaft itself. Uh, Lincoln asked me adjustment that needs to be done. You shouldn't have to do anything. Um, your machine is going to, if, if, if indeed it is fuel injection, as I think that it is, uh, it'll automatically adjust uh, within a certain range, plus or minus 5%. Cycle crazy too. It sounded great, ran for five miles. Then upon acceleration, got the slight lurch with the oil flash. Tried getting on the highway, couldn't go past eight, 58 miles an hour. I didn't push it because I thought of afraid of it lurching. Fault someone that could be wrong. Uh, would you start with fuel pressure? Absolutely. That's where I would go. Um, oh, sorry, there was a cap, uh, cap on how long the question could be without it breaking up. There's one other thing you could you should check. Cycle crazy. Um, the engine it has to be able it, it's vented. And if that vent is stopped up, that tank is going to act like a vacuum and it's not going to deliver what um, the uh, the fuel to the pump itself. So check that and make sure that uh, she isn't stopped up on the vent side. Lincoln Marsh, sorry for the choppy text questions. The text box only let me text so much at a time, so I had to split it up in several comments. Not a problem. Paul said, I've not looked at the schematic yet for this 2003 Grizzly on the lower ball joints. They look like the ones from uh, your video with a clip, but I'm not sure yet. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that could be the case. And Lincoln, oh, Lincoln, what are you saying about the clutch weights? I missed that connection. Oh, clutch weights. I've learned that my 22 Kodiak has 18 gram primary clutch weights and the older grizzly has 14 grams damn that's a big difference i wonder if they were changing the spring rates as well and that's why they uh why they went with the uh the heavier the heavier weights hmm. well all right guys it's 323 i still have a <laughs> mr original concept garage i made it well, great. I'm about to check out. And, you, and now you show up. Hey. <laughs> oh, Lincoln's asking, will going back to the 14 gram weights be a good, great, uh, good weights be a good upgrade? It'll make the clutch engage quicker. I will tell you that much. Oh, cycle crazy. Uh, to Sorry, can you be more specific with the engine vent? I recently widowed and uh, learning as I go. I'm sorry to hear that. The... I'm trying to remember where that one vents. I can't remember if it's at the tank, the filler neck, or if it actually has a vent tube at the bottom of the engine, then it goes back to the uh, the intake to vent uh, where it doesn't vent to atmosphere. Once again, look on the, uh, the exploded parts diagrams and see how many um, lines are coming out of the tank. If it's just the one, well, that tells me that the vent's gotta be built into the uh, the filler neck and uh, that may need to be uh, checked out a little bit better. Well, all right, guys, I am going to head out and uh, go and get back on the road because uh, our check-in's at 5, and 
I'll be a little bit late, but that's all right because y'all are important to me. Well, guys, I appreciate you swinging by and spending a little bit of time with us and sending me in some really good questions. Hopefully, I'll be able to give, get you pointed in the right direction just a little bit. And anybody else that's uh, adding some more questions in here, that gives me a good way to start off next Friday, God willing. So once again, everybody take care. Have a great weekend, a great week. And hopefully, I will be back in the next studio, uh, next Friday, back in the studio at 3 o'clock. Y'all take care.